to Mathematics Alive. Today, we will be dealing with an overview of the history of mathematics. We will talk about real, exciting people and their contributions to the field of mathematics. Most of the mathematicians that we will talk about had been dead for a long time, but their ideas are still very much alive today. The mathematics that we know in the modern world has its root in ancient Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Babylonia. Then it was developed in Greece and simultaneously in China and in India. This ancient mathematics, along with some influence of Hindu mathematics, is spread to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. It was translated into Arabic and Latin and was adopted by Western Europe. Western education was spread around the world by colonization and trade, and today's mathematics has been enriched by the contributions of different cultures, civilizations, and mathematicians who unselfishly passed on their discoveries and knowledge to us. Let us look back and appreciate how mathematics have developed and who made these developments possible. Sumer Babylonia circa 4000 to 3000 BCE or before Christ era. Sumer was the modern day Iraq and it was the birthplace of writing, the wheel, agriculture, the arch, the plow, irrigation, and many other innovations. It was indeed the cradle of civilization during those times. The Sumerians developed the earliest known writing system a pictographic writing system known as the cuneiform script, using wedge-shaped characters inscribed on baked clay tablet, like this picture. Sumerian and Babylonian mathematics was based on a sexagesimal or base 60 numeric system. In 3000 BCE, the Egyptians were the first people to develop a numerical system that was based on the number 10, or a decimal system. Hieroglyphic numerals developed in Egypt. So let's look at the uh, picture of hieroglyphic numerals. The first nine numbers are simply um, sticks. And then number 10 is an inverted U or a horseshoe. Number 100 is just a coil and 1000 is a symbol of a tulip flower. 10,000 is a finger, a finger bent a little. And then 100,000 is a frog and 1 million is like a man who was rejoicing that he won one million in lottery. 300 BCE, the major Greek progress in mathematics was from 300 BC to 200 AD. The symbol AD here is Anno Domini, or in the year of our Lord, basing the beginning of the counting from the birth of Christ. During this era, Euclid wrote the elements, a compilation of theorems, axioms in algebra, and postulates and theorems in geometry. With this, he gained the title Father of Geometry. 200 BCE, Archimedes of Syracuse, a Greek mathematician, physicist, inventor, and astronomer, derived a range of formulas in geometry, including the area of a circle, the surface area and volume of a sphere and the area under a parabola. Archimedes was the greatest mathematician of the ancient world. His life was so interesting that I will be sharing two anecdotes about him. First, there was a legend about King Hero II of Syracuse who was worried that a dishonest goldsmith had adultered 
a supposedly pure gold crown with silver. His problem was how to find out the truth without damaging the crown. Archimedes' insight came as he was getting into his bathtub. The water rose by the same volume that his body occupied. Archimedes was so excited at his breakthrough that he ran naked through the streets shouting, Eureka! Eureka! I found it! And what he found was the law of water displacement. Do the same thing with the crown, that is, dunk it in water and measure how much the water rises and you've got the crown's volume. Knowing its weight, you can now figure out the crown's density since gold is about twice the density of silver. That will tell you if it is pure gold or not. During the siege of Syracuse, a Roman soldier was sent by Marsilius to capture Archimedes, entered his home. The instruction by the Roman general Marsilius was to get Archimedes unharmed. During the time, Archimedes was doing a geometry proof using figures drawn in the sand on his floor. He dismissed the stranger. Don't disturb my circles, he shouted. The soldier flew into a rage and beat the 75-year-old genius to death. To honor Archimedes, the sphere and cylinder symbol was placed on his grave. 140 BCE, trigonometry of Hipparchus developed. Hipparchus of Nicaea was a Greek astronomer, geographer, and mathematician considered as the founder of trigonometry. 775 CE, Hindu mathematical works were translated into Arabic. 830 CE, Arabic algebra and Indian numerals came to Western Europe through the writings of Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi. Other Arabic scholars also cultivated Greek mathematics, translating the writings of Apollonius, Archimedes, Euclid, Ptolemy, and others into Arabic. 1202 CE, Leonardo of Pisa, also called Fibonacci, wrote Liber Abaci, a book filled with arithmetical and algebraic information which he had collected during his travels. This was one of the means by which the Hindu Arabic system of numeration was introduced into Western Europe. The best known contribution of Hindu mathematics to modern mathematics was the decimal position system. And that is the system we're using today, the Hindu Arabic numeration system. Johannes Widman was a German mathematician. The plus and minus symbol first appeared in his book, Mercantile Arithmetic, published in Leipzig in 1489 in reference to surpluses and deficits in business problems. Later in 1514, van der Hoek was the first to use the plus and minus sign in writing algebraic expressions. In 17th century, John Napier and others greatly extended the power of mathematics as a calculatory science with his discovery of logarithms. In 1619, Rene Descartes was the, a notable mathematician of the 17th century and he invented the Cartesian coordinate system, developed analytic geometry and laid the foundation for the development of calculus. The Cartesian coordinate system was named after Rene Descartes. In 1629, Pierre de Fermat, who was a French lawyer and mathematician, is given credit for the development that led to infinitesimal calculus. Fermat, together with Pascal, began the mathematical study of probability. Blaise Pascal laid the foundations for the probability theory 
together with Prema. They were best of friends. He invented the Pascaline, an early mechanical calculator, and he also is known for the Pascal's Triangle, a tool for expanding a binomial of the form a plus b raised to the nth power or to any power. In 1684, Leibniz's first paper on the calculus was published. Gottfried Leibniz discovered infinitesimal calculus along with Sir Isaac Newton. However, each one made this discovery alone, not while working together. So look at their pictures. They seem to be very much alike, especially their hairstyle. 1736. The most important mathematician of the 18th century was Leonard Euler, who started the graph theory, the calculus of variations, and differential geometry. During his later years, um, he spent his years in blindness, but his lack of vision did not hamper him from being a productive mathematician until his last years. Toward the end of the 18th century, an Italian mathematician by the name of Joseph Louis Lagrange began a rigorous theory of functions and of mechanics. He also played a key role in the creation of the metric system of weights and measures. In 1799, Carl Friedrich Gauss, a German mathematician, generally regarded as one of the greatest mathematicians of all time for his contributions to number theory, geometry, probability, planetary, and the theory of functions. In 1799, he proved the fundamental theory of theorem of algebra. John Venn introduced Venn diagram in 1874. This became a useful tool in set theory. In 1975, Benoit Mandelbrot introduced the theory of fractal. He published the Fractal Geometry of Nature in 1982. And here are some examples of fractals. Claude Elwood Shannon was an American mathematician electrical engineer and cryptographer known as the father of information theory. Shannon is noted for his landmark thesis, a mathematical theory of communication, which he published in 1948. He laid the theoretical foundations for digital circuits and information theory. In 1994, Andrew Wiles proved Fermat's last theorem. And in the year 2000, mathematical challenges of the 21st century were announced. We have just had an overview of a very wide field of mathematics. There is so much to learn and discover in this field. Try studying and writing a biography of a mathematician, and you will discover that mathematicians are interesting people, and they made mathematics interesting quoting from isaac newton if i have been able to see further it was only because i stood on the shoulders of giants this video will also help your friends see further and stand on the shoulders of giants understand and appreciate the development of mathematics so please like it share it and subscribe to this channel by clicking the button below thank you very much for listening